What is up guys, this is Jay here, J Media one and today we are back with another cool review. This time we're going to be working on reviewing some Windows tips and tricks. We've had a lot of requests for this as we've been going over a lot of Mac tips and tricks lately. So today we're going to focus on Windows. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to start with today is personalizing the start menu. I think a lot of people don't know about this feature and it's pretty cool. So the first thing you probably noticed with Windows 10 was the colorful and bright start menu. It once was at the bottom of the screen and has grown to become a full screen experience with live tiles that show images and even advertisements. So we're going to show you how to customize it right now. So basically what you do is you go down here to your Windows icon and you click on that. You click on this little cog wheel which is now your settings. Once you click on settings you click on personalization right here. Inside of personalization, we got this menu. And inside of that menu, we're going to look for start, and we're going to click that. Inside of the start menu, this is what lets you customize your start menu. So you can show more tiles on start. You can show apps in the start menu. You can show your most used apps. You can show suggestions, which is really cool. And then down here in the, in the bottom, you see this blue uh, writing, which says choose which folders appear on start. You can click that and you can select it to where it's just certain folders appear. I like to have File Explorer inside of here. That will allow you to access all of your files. Settings, Documents, you don't need downloads in there really. Pictures, okay. Um, we're going to turn that off. And then your personal folder you can leave on as well if you like. So you got all those options down there. And then you can also click on all these options. Definitely a cool feature I don't think a lot of people know about. So definitely give that one a look guys. One cool snippet that I forgot to mention is that if you don't like the start menu the way that it looks now, if you guys simply go to this menu which is in your start settings personalization and you turn off every button except for the show app list, then you're going to right here the show app list and start menu, then this will bring back the familiar look that you're used to inside of your start menu. This just has all of your apps inside of there. Number two, we're going to use focus assist to keep you on task. This Windows 10 also has a focus assist, if you guys heard me talking about the Macs, where they do have the focus assist option to keep you focused on daily tasks. And Windows has this option as well. So if you go down to the start menu down here and you click on settings, setting menu is going to pop up, you're going to click on system. Once you go to system, you're going to click on focus assist. You see focus assist here and it lets you set alarms so that alarms only it'll hide all notifications except for those you can set priority and then you can customize a priority list inside of here you can click on show incoming calls including VoIP, show reminders show notifications so this is super awesome if you're doing a lot of work you can turn it on during certain times um, you can set times and set if it's priority only when you're duplicating your display, when you're playing a game, or when you're using an app in full screen mode, which I really like this. This one allows a lot of notifications just to be hidden, uh, you know, based on when you're in full screen mode. You can show a summary of what you missed while the focus assist was on, which you always kind of want to keep this box checked so you don't miss any notifications inside of there while you're using focus assist. Okay, the next tip I have for you is using multiple desktops to manage projects. If you guys ever seen my Mac videos, you can have multiple desktops open inside of Mac, and then you go into your Mac and you can click on desktop one, desktop two, desktop three, and that allows you to kind of organize things and have all these little virtual desktops if you're working on big projects. This is especially useful if you don't have multiple monitors. So in Windows 10, you have this little task view button down here. I think a lot of people don't even know about this, but you click on this task view and it opens up all of your windows that are active. You can click on new desktop up here and inside of the new desktop it allows you to add a desktop 2, desktop 3, desktop 4 and then inside of those desktops you can switch back and forth between which desktop you want to use. You can also quickly switch desktops without going into the task pane by using the keyboard shortcuts Windows key plus control plus the left arrow and Windows key plus control plus the right arrow. Now you can quickly move from desktop to desktop to find all your different projects and associated tasks. Have you guys ever heard of the cloud clipboard? I think this feature is very, very good and a lot of people don't take advantage of it and it's called cloud clipboard. 
basically you can get to your cloud clipboard by you clicking on the Windows key and V and that's going to bring up your clipboard here and show you what you've copied over to your clipboard at the point in time that you copy this to your clipboard like right here um, then you can go on another Windows device providing it's under a hundred kilobytes in size and you can copy and paste it onto that other device so this is pretty cool this is a new feature that Mac introduced but Windows has had this for a long time so basically what you want to do is you just want to open up a new notepad, something like that. And if you have some text inside of here, hi, how are you guys today? This is Jay. Okay. And so then we just click this and we hit control C, which is the copy command. You click on um, Windows key V and it'll show you what's inside of your clipboard here. Then from anywhere you can copy and you can paste this action. You can also delete it and you can pin it. You can clear everything in your clipboard by clicking on the clear all button. This is a super useful feature I don't think a lot of people even know they can do. Another cool tip and trick is to take advantage of dark mode and night light. I know that a lot of you have heard of dark mode on many different devices, but Windows itself offers a dark mode feature. And dark mode is super easy to get to. You just go to settings and then you go over here to personalization and you go to colors and when you're inside of colors you can see that there's light mode here and dark mode and as I'm switching this back and forth you can see my bar at the very bottom changing you also have to choose your default path mode which you can make dark or light if you want it to be that way the cool thing is is there's all kinds of colors here too that a lot of people don't know about that you can set up as an accent color if you like I'm a big fan of orange so you can set up orange if you like inside of there um, you can customize your color and things like that. So that is the one cool feature. The other thing that I'd like to talk about is nightlight. Um, now that a lot of people are using video calls like Zoom and things like that, you may notice that when you're sitting straight in front of your huge monitor, all that white light shining on your face makes you look overexposed. So how do we fix this? Well, you go to systems, you go to settings, and then you click on system here and then inside a system you go to this night light and this says night light right here you can turn it on or off and inside of the night light you have different settings where you can set the strength you can change it here you can schedule it to turn on only certain hours or you can schedule it from you know sunset to sunrise if you like um, and in order to do that you do have to have location settings on so that it knows when your sunrise and your sunset is. Well, this is a super cool feature that I think a lot of people don't even know about, the nightlight feature. Um, Apple has a similar one, but uh, like I said, Windows has a lot of cool things a lot of people don't know about. Okay guys, so the last thing we want to talk about in this particular video is just keeping your Windows 10 machine secure. And I think a lot of people you know, they think that they're secure, but they're not 100% sure, and there's all these antiviruses out there, and there's all these different things, right? But it's very important to keep your, your computer secure and, you know, to know exactly what you're doing. And a lot of companies will have a qualified cyber expert that can go in and take care of a lot of these. But uh, the number one thing that you want to do to keep your Windows secure is to keep Windows updated. And so Windows updates are the number one thing. And you can click, click on the start menu, type in update, and then you can, mine says I'm up to date, great. But you can check for updates here. Um, you can do a PC health check. You can set on pause updates, which I don't recommend. I like to change the active hours inside of here so you can um, tell the computer basically when you're working and it won't try to do any updates during those periods of time. That way your updates don't interrupt you. You can also look on your update history and you have some advanced options where you can see um, updates from Microsoft products, for example, and you can download updates over metering connections. You could restart this device as soon as possible to install the update. Don't highly recommend doing that because it's going to interrupt some of your tasks. Uh, show a notification when your PC requires a restart. So little things like that. Um, and you can pause these, but I recommend Windows Update is number one. Windows has its own built-in security if you click on Windows Security. 
And it does have virus and threat protection. It does have account protection. It has firewall protection, app and browser control, all these cool things. So Windows in, within itself now has the ability to secure your computer and you don't really have to worry about having a super secure antivirus on your PC if you are willing to keep all this stuff up to date. Windows does a very good job of that. Another reason too to keep your Windows computer up to date is because um, your apps always need updated and things like that so that they're running smoothly on the operating system. You also want to set a login password if you haven't already. Most people don't bother with one, um, but your computer is vulnerable to anyone. So you go to uh, settings and accounts. So go to settings here and then you go to accounts. right inside of here and inside of your accounts this is where you can set a password you can create a picture you can do different things like that uh, you can also select other users that happen to be on your PC which is super nice if you go to sign in options over here this lets you select different ways that you can sign into your device uh, Windows hello face um, you got the hello fingerprint now you can do a pin which I like the pin because the pin is super fast, easy and secure. Uh, you can do a physical security key, so you can set up a flash drive so that the flash drive has to be plugged into your computer. This is probably the most secure. And then you also have just a regular password and a picture password. A lot of people are overwhelmed by passwords and that's why they don't do this. But I'm telling you right now, you need to have one. So pick whichever option you think is best for you. And they are giving more and more options nowadays for you to sign into your computer. Make sure that that is selected. And make sure that everything is up to date. That's the number one thing. Um, you could also consider encryption if you're super worried about people stealing your files. There's all kinds of different built-in tools for that. And you can use a VPN for your internet, which I highly recommend using a VPN. It keeps everything secure and safe. And they can't track you and things like that. There's lots of VPNs out there. Okay guys, well I hope this video was useful for you, and if it was, make sure that you mash the like button. That helps YouTube's algorithms to get my video out to more people that want to see some tips and tricks on Windows. Also, make sure that you're subscribed, because we're going to be releasing more videos like this, and we want you guys to be able to have first-hand knowledge of when they pop up. The bell button will also help with that. If you guys would like to see any specific videos on Windows, Mac OS, iOS, or any tutorials, I am very easy to get a hold of. What you do is you just go to jaymedia1 at gmail.com and send me an email. Throw on the subject line like what you would like to see, and I will get that video out to you guys. I will give you guys all the tips and tricks that you can possibly ever want. I have a ton of knowledge in this area. Okay guys, well thanks for watching and we will see you guys in the next one. Later guys.